It feels great to be a homeowner, able to have your own space, your own place, and it's wonderful. It's just a wonderful feeling. We're finally being able to live that American dream, so it's just brought pride, happiness, and joy into my life. Well, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a small red car behind here. That's where my trailer sat. I was there for 32 years, and I've been at the Promise Keeper now for two years. Today we're going to catch up with the innovative nonprofit organization that created Sunrise, the first ever trailer park transformation in the country created without resident displacement. To learn more about providing affordable homes for low-income families in our community, join us as we talk with Dan Rosenzweig, President and CEO of Habitat for Humanity of Greater Charlottesville. Come on! So I love the slogan, you all have a slogan, we don't need a handout, we need a hand up. Explain what it means to be a partner family. Well, you, you hit it right on the head. We are a hand up, not a hand out. We don't give away houses. Uh, we help low income residents who work hard uh, realize their dreams. So very often uh, you have people in the community who work really hard serving food at the ca at cafeterias at the university, uh, uh, work in retail jobs, et cetera, you name it, but they can't afford to live in Charlottesville. Right. And so we provide that pathway, not only to have a better place to live, but to earn equity through home ownership. Let's talk about some of the very earliest projects. We visited you all in uh, 2008 on Nunley Street. Talk about that neighborhood. Nunley Street was really the beginning of a, of a brand new age, a new era in the history of Habitat. And so when you last visited us, we were at the early stages of, of building what we call the Peyton Street community, which is the first mixed income habitat community in the state of Virginia. So talk about the importance of, de of developing mixed income neighborhoods. We think mixed income is a healthier model. It's a healthier model uh, financially, it's a healthier model socially. We're creating neighborhoods where people aren't segregated by race or age or income. We're building communities for all people to, to enjoy and participate in. Uh, one of the things that we do is we serve in the role of developer as well as builder. So we'll build a neighborhood, we'll sell market rate lots to builders who build homes for general purchase, and the income that we get from selling those lots helps subsidize the market rate component of the mixed income neighborhoods. And then you, your partner families can participate in a good neighbor program. Talk about that. You know, we've learned a lot along the way and we've realized a, f a, a number of things. We're learning all the time. So as we've moved our way from neighborhood to neighborhood, we've, we've made a lot of advances in terms of the way that we uh, create space and, and third spaces for people to gather. But one of the other things we realized is that it's maybe a little bit unrealistic to simply take a, a very, very diverse group of people, put them together in a neighborhood and just, you know, wash your hands and say, hey, just go make it happen. <laughs> Uh, especially when you're building in fairly dense neighborhoods like we do because of high land costs. Um, it's really important that people get a sense of, of neighborhood and start to work with their neighbors before they even move into their homes. And so it requires them to step up and take leadership roles. It, it requires them to cooperate. And it's just sort of creating that DNA in a neighborhood that, that they're eventually going to own. And so yeah. they need to take responsibility for it. And this gives them um, a little bit of preparation and um, an experience doing that together. And so we think that our neighborhoods launch with a little bit more wind in their sails than, than even typical market rate neighborhoods do. Yeah, okay, so speaking about neighborhoods and community, I wanna talk about the Sunrise Project. Well, we're, we're very proud of Sunrise. Uh, Sunrise is the first trailer park transformation in the nation without resident displacement. Uh, we were looking in 2004 for a development opportunity and uh, this one kind of um, uh, came in front of us because there had been a contract placed on this land by a, a local developer. And right. he was going to do what developers do and that was going to convert it, make highest and best use of the land, but that highest and best use didn't include the residents who were living here. Right. So in 2004 when we purchased it we made a promise to the residents of Sunrise that they could stay for the rest of their lives uh, affordably and we knew that because this community is so incredibly generous uh, that we could count on the, the greater Charlottesville community, volunteers, donors, uh, uh, government officials, neighbors to step up and work side by side with us and more importantly side by side with the residents to make it happen. And so 
what you're looking at today is the realization of that, of not really our vision, but the vision of the residents themselves. And we think it's beautiful. We think it's a really great place to live. This community has uh, thrived on friendliness and togetherness and love. And that's what keeps us together. And I told them too, that I was born in Belmont and raised there. I lived in Belmont my entire life and I had planned on dying in Belmont. So I didn't want to be taken out of the area and they kept, they kept me here, which is great. I was very excited when I moved into my new home, you know, it, it was just, I made my first um, home payment and I was on time and ever since then, you know, I've been keeping it up, you know, it's been a whole year now and it's very emotional, you know, and to be able to be a single parent and to take care of my four kids and be able to afford my home. It's very excited. What exactly is here? Everything from homes built and sold by market rate builders to Habitat partner family homes that they've built themselves and in conjunction with volunteers and purchased. Uh, there are some rentals. The, the vast majority of Sunrise residents, longtime Sunrise residents, uh, were aging. And so they wanted senior oriented housing. So the first thing that we built was what's behind me, which is what we call the Promise Keeper apartment building. And in the Promise Keeper, there are replacement rentals, zero step entry, completely accessible uh, 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 apartment homes for the, the longtime residents. Uh, there are some condominium units that Habitat Partner families have purchased. And there's the real jewel in the center of the neighborhood, uh, a partnership with ARP. We constructed a community center, the neighborhood center, which is a place for all the diverse uh, people in this community to gather and, and have fellowship, enjoy meals. There's a computer lab for the children of the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, there's homework help for, for kids who need it. There's just yeah. a variety of activities that go on that, that promote wellness and togetherness in the yeah. community. And it's such a community. There's such a sense of community. So let's talk about the Southwood project. We were approached by the owner of the Southwood Mobile Home Park in 2007 who had heard about our non-displacement pledge to the Sunrise residents and she really liked it. She was incredible. She sold us Southwood. Uh, at a discount price and she, she owner financed it, which has allowed us to invest uh, quite a bit of money in, in necessary immediate repairs uh, to make it in the medium term a decent place to live. But this is a large project. Is it 350 homes? Yeah, currently there are 346 trailers, 1,500 residents at Southwood. And it's a great community in many ways. The, the people really identify with Southwood. They, they take care of each other. It's just very under-resourced. And the trailers themselves are assets that, that fade in value over time. And over the long haul, they're not, they're not livable. And so it really needs to be redeveloped in a way that's more sustainable. And we think the, that the model that we used here at Sunrise can be done in a way that's gonna uh, be a, an incredible asset for the greater Charlottesville community. And much more important, it's gonna be an even better place to live for the people who live there currently. Yeah, if someone came in and just developed it and said, you're on your own, you're talking about 1,500 people who would suddenly have to find a place to live in I'm, this area. Yeah, mm -hmm. I honestly don't know how this community could absorb that. Uh, it would overtax services in the area, and there just aren't homes to, to, to rehouse people. You'd have mass homelessness, and we just couldn't let that happen. And so we are committed to rebuilding Southwood on a non-displacement pledge, where so we're facilitating healthy housing choices for each resident of the park. We think it's gonna be a fabulous place long run. So this is all very exciting, but you have even more projects. Tell us about Belmont Cottages. Well, Belmont Cottages is part of uh, what we call Project 20. A couple of years ago, we made a pledge to this community that we would build a minimum of 20 homes a year annually in partnership with low-income residents of the community. And this coming up fiscal year, thanks to the generosity of the, of the local uh, donor community in particular, uh, we'll uh, be working on 32 homes in about six or seven different neighborhoods. And Belmont Cottages is, is our next mixed income neighborhood on Avon Street. Uh, it's wonderful. It was made possible via a land donation from Lane Bonner, a local realtor. And so we're creating a 15 unit mixed income development with Habitat Partner families and homes for sale. This house is a house that was built with me and with a lot of lovely people. So this is, uh, I guess it's past owning your first house is, is just wonderful. It just drives something in me to think that there are people 
who really do kill and they really have feelings to, towards you and they, they want you to succeed in life. And it's a wonderful world. And life has its way of catching up with you. You could not do this without many, many, many volunteers. Talk about that. Exactly. Volunteers are our engine. Uh, our homes are built uh, with volunteers. We supervise and teach and train volunteers. And you come down and join us at the job site. We'll teach you how to build and you can build side by side with, with wonderful low-income folks who are working their tails off to achieve their dreams. Oh, that's fantastic. So what's down the road? Down the road, well, we're going to keep marching forward with Project 20. This coming up year, uh, we'll be uh, building at Elliott and a couple of other places as well. We have a brand new project on Fifth Street called Harmony Ridge. That'll be another 14-unit mixed-income community. And we're going to keep looking for opportunities because the need in this community is incredible and it's not going away. This is a very, very wonderful place to live. We all love living here, but it's a very difficult place to live if if you don't have enough money to afford housing. And in Charlottesville alone, 25% of the people in the city pay more than 50% of their total income on housing. Mm -hmm. And until we start to, to address that need, this is not gonna be the community that realizes its, uh, its intention of being a world-class city. It's not the kind of community that we all want it to be. It's not gonna be a community for everybody. And we're not gonna rest on our laurels and we're not gonna stop building until everybody in this community has an opportunity to have a safe, decent, affordable place to live. I stayed down in Buckingham in a trailer for 15 years and I had to take a 45 minute drive to get to work and it is so much better being here. I could walk to work, I could drive to work, I could catch the bus to work. It felt like a dream come true when I first moved in the door. I couldn't believe it and it was beautiful. Dan came to me while construction was being done on the building and uh, he asked me what should the building be called and I told him the promise keeper because Habitat kept its promise to the Sunrise Trail Court people. You know, they give you the encouragement, they give you courage, and they teach you new skills, you know, that you never thought that you would learn with Habitat. So it's a very good experience, you know, working with Habitat. It's been a long process, you know, but it, it still it just brings pride and happiness. It's just that pride factor in it. That, you know, you feel proud of yourself that I have succeeded.